Quick question. Can you set the record straight when it comes to the political interview? I just want to get your side of the story. Do you believe that Trump and Obama are the same, just different when it comes to their policies? We understand that you refute this political story. Could you just set the record straight so we get your side of it? Do you think that President Obama is the same as President Absolutely Trump? Absolutely not. That is silly to even think and equate the two. One is human, the other is... Is it true that you just think that he's more polished than Trump? Set the record straight when it comes to the political interview. I just want to get your side of the story. Do you believe that Trump and Obama are the same, just different when it comes to their policies? We understand that you refute this political story. Could you just set the record straight so we get your side of it? Do you think that President Obama is the same as President Absolutely Trump? Absolutely not. That is silly to even think and equate the two. One is human, the other is... Is it true that you just think that he's more polished than Trump? Okay, go ahead. Okay, we just got out of the DFL uh, candidate caucus at Bethel Synagogue. It really was all I could do to, to not just um, yell out to Elon Omar or the Jewish organizers. Why do you think it was a good idea to bring in a woman who hates Israel and adheres to a ideology that kills Jews, right? Why do you think it's a good idea to bring a woman on stage who's friends with Linda Sarsour, the vile anti-Semitic Jew hater? I wanted to ask why to the Jewish organizations did you think it was a good idea to give her a platform for her lies and Takia? And believe me, it was Takia in spades. You can't fool me with that little hijab okay I know what's going on in that brain and it's not good for the Jews and when it's not good for the Jews I feel like I have to stand up and do something so I made a, a little uh, mini uh, copy of Elon's tweet from the tooth from when was it let's see 2012 let me read it to you Israel has hypnotized the world may Allah awaken the people and help them see the evil doings of Israel hashtag Gaza, hashtag Palestine, hashtag Israel. Does that sound like somebody that's going to be friendly to Israel and vote for Israel and really care about you and not want to kill you because you're an infidel and a Jew, right? You want to vote for this person? So I made copies and I'm putting them on cards because I want the people that go to this to understand what kind of a candidate Elon Omar is. She's dangerous, especially to the Jews. So hashtag wake up Jews. Thank you. Salam, welcome. I'm here to welcome your next congresswoman and my mother, Ilhan Omar. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you for welcoming us to song and dance. What an amazing journey this has been. I stand here before you tonight as your Congresswoman elect with many firsts behind my name. The first woman of color to represent our state in Congress. The first woman to wear a hijab to represent us in Congress. The first refugee ever elected to Congress and one of the first Muslim women elected to Congress. A title I share with my beautiful sister from Michigan, Rashida Tlaib. But you all know I did not run to be a first. I ran because I came to this country. I heard of its promises. And when I looked around this district to see many who have never known the bounty of the American promise. The promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This country is supposed to be the land where people have the tools necessary to lead a life that is prosperous. Yet, 
Indigenous people, promised homes, are living in tents like refugees in their own land. Millennials promise the American dream if they study hard enough only to find that dream deferred by the harsh realities of our economy. Immigrants promise the land of opportunity are too often met with bigotry and hate. I could not stand by on the sidelines and watch those promises go unkept. My grandfather, my grandfather taught me that when you see injustice, you fight back. You do not give in to sorrow. You do not give in to sadness. You organize and you build with people. I would not be here tonight without my people. My family, my father, who's probably lost somewhere in the sea. My children, Isra, Adnan, and Ilwat. And my husband, my best friend, my rock, Ahmed. And my other family, my campaign team, our staff, the interns, the volunteers, who have given endlessly of themselves and their time these past few months. And I wouldn't be here without you, the people of the 5th Congressional District, who in electing me have said that you will fight for our bold progressive vision, for healthcare for all, for working families to ensure that they are paid a living wage, and have access to safe and sick time, thanks in large part to labor unions who have our backs. We will fight for world-class education, tuition-free college, and finally free students from the shackles of debt. We will fight to abolish ICE, keep families together, protect refugees, protect women's right to choose, and fight against climate change. You as Minnesotans are the North Star that guides our nation. You don't back down. You become your own promise. When the call came for me to run for Congress, I answered because the time demanded it. A time when racism and white supremacy threatens our very existence, when my status as an immigrant black Muslim woman means that the current administration does not see me as an American. You know I will not bow down. You know I will not back down to fear and hate. I will stand strong with you. And as we fight to protect our immigrant families, our neighbors, our children, our planet, our communities, I promise to always have your back. So our state is very cold. But the people have warm hearts. Yes. This state has always made me feel like I was part of a family. Because here in Minnesota, we don't only welcome immigrants, we send them to Washington. journey does not end tonight. We must stand side by side and fight for our democracy. We must fight for our rights and the freedoms we value. It is up to us to fulfill the promise of America. We must do the work to create the America we believe in, the America we deserve. We are who we've been waiting for. Thank you so much for being here. 
And now let's get to the business of dancing and celebrating. We're going to 